Okay, what up Helldivers? It's your favorite Asian robot right here. Hopefully one day I'll be your favorite Helldivers 2 content creator. And today what I'm going to teach you guys is the automaton loadouts that I would consider best. Alright? Now, although I use the word meta, I want to be clear up front, meta simply means the most efficient. These two loadouts are actually the most efficient at taking on the automatons, and they are best when paired. Okay? It's not like this one loadout will get you through everything. No, automatons don't work that way. They're not like terminates. Okay? Automatons are a different type of faction. They're a whole different animal. And it is best if you have one of each of these loadouts on your team. So pair up with a friend, all right, and you guys will have good results. All right. Now, how are we going to do this video? This is a discussion and information type video you're not going to see a lot of gameplay here because i find that there's no point in me showing you a 10 20 second clip when realistically what you need to be seeing are the streams where we use these loadouts and so you can see how they function in different situations the links to the streams where i'll be using this loadout is in the description of the video okay so you can go check that out you can go see how that functions and how they work together all right now the first loadout that i'm going to talk about is the auto cannon loadout. This is the first loadout in the set, and I'm actually going to go through this first. I'll teach you all about the primary weapons, armor, the stratagems, everything. As you can already see from this picture, in general, you're going to have the auto cannon, the shield generator, the eagle airstrike, or the 500 kilogram bomb, depends on the mission. And the last slot is a flexible slot that you can use with anything. All right, I tend to prefer the auto cannon turret, but the choice is yours. Okay, let's go over and discuss that loadout right now. Okay, ladies and gents, let's talk about the first loadout, which is the auto cannon loadout. For those of you that need a reminder, this is what the auto cannon loadout looks like, and I'm going to discuss the primary weapon, secondary weapon, grenade, the armors, and all the stratagems in this video. So, let's get to it. Okay, for the auto cannon loadout, my suggested primary weapon is the last 16 sickle. This is an extremely efficient weapon against the automatons. You can take out most targets by aiming at their weak spot, i.e., the head. All right, any of the little guys, the normal uh, marauders, raiders, whatever you call them, the little automatons, you're going to be able to take them out with a sickle. As for the devastator types and the hulks, obviously you cannot take them out with a sickle, but for the devastators, their weak point is still their head. You can actually take it out with a sickle. As for the hulks, you can actually shoot their back with the sickle and still take it out. So the sickle is generally considered my choice as the primary. You can use other stuff like the Scorcher. The Scorcher is great for Scout Striders, okay? But most of the time, the Scout Strider is taken out with your support weapon instead of your primary. So you don't have to bring the Plaz 1 Scorcher if you do not have it. And honestly, the other choices are all... It depends on your flavor, what you like, all that kind of stuff. But me personally, I find the Sickle to be the most efficient, even on a hot planet like Ustotu. We have tried out the Sickle, and it has done absolutely well. Okay, so the Sickle is my choice against the Automatons. Now, for the secondary weapon, I just tend to bring along a good Redeemer, um, set to semi-auto, of course. The Redeemer basically is the same as the Peacemaker, except that it's got double the capacity. Same damage, same stats, everything. Some people do prefer the Senator, but the Redeemer is my choice. Grenade-wise, impact grenades are my choice. If you need to destroy a Fabricator, just throw the impact grenade through the door. Okay, but there are other ways to destroy Fabricators, and most of the time you'll be using either a Stratagem or using the Auto Cannon to destroy them. So, or... So, realistically speaking, the impact grenades are mostly for anti-tank, or dealing with certain objectives, or if you've got one of those cannon turrets, you can uh, impact grenade the back. Yeah, so, that is what the grenades are for, okay? So, that is about it. Now, for the armor, here's what you're going to need. For the armor, I tend to prefer the Trench Engineer CE35 set. For the auto cannon, this one provides amazing reduction in recoil. The 30% when crouching or prone is beautiful. Do not underestimate how good this is with the auto cannon. Then, increasing the amount of grenades you can carry by two is a godsend. You can delete so many tanks and so many structures just by having this. So, Trench Engineer is my go-to for this auto cannon loadout. This is the, exactly what you'll see me using on stream. This is exactly what we utilize. Okay, helmet and cape is whatever is your taste. You can you can adjust accordingly. In fact, I'm gonna quickly take take the chance to change to my orange cape because I always forget. Okay, now, let's talk about stratagems. Here, for this build, there are three stratagems that are necessary for the build and one flexible slot. The three stratagems that are most necessary are obviously um, the... Where's the autocannon? Okay, 
The auto cannon is a fantastic weapon. This thing, although you know it's showing you blowing up the scout striders, you can actually blow up the scout striders by hitting them dead on. But it's the explosion that will actually hit the little guy in the back. So try to aim a little bit higher. If you hit it on a high point, the scout striders should die. It will not actually penetrate their armor though, okay? Because they're heavily armored at the front. Now, the other thing to take note of is that for the auto cannon, because it's only got medium armor penetration, it's good enough for the devastators, but it will not kill the Hulk unless you smash the head. However, you can also fire at the vent on his back and he will die very quickly. You can fire at the vents on any objective and deal with it. You cannot deal with the dropships, but honestly, while they're about to drop their units, you can actually fire at the underside of the dropship and kill several units before they even land. So the auto cannon is pretty much universal. The downside is that you have to carry a backpack, which means you will not have shields. Once you get used to it, though, it is absolutely fine against the automatons. You will see me using this on stream. I promise you, again, a lot of people don't feel comfortable going in without the shield, but you got to get rid of that crutch. Once you get rid of that crutch, you realize that automatons are not difficult to fight, and the auto cannon is a godsend weapon against them. Okay? So do not hesitate to use this. It is very, very good. All right. The auto cannon is a must have for this loadout. Obviously, it's literally an auto cannon loadout, right? The other stratagem is the Eagle Airstrike. This is universally useful, great for killing tanks, great for destroying fabricators. Do not go in without the Eagle Airstrike. The substitute for that is the 500 kilogram bomb, but I only tend to use this against the in the missions where I have to destroy the command bunker. Okay? Um, it's really your choice between the Airstrike and the 500 kilogram, but I prefer the Airstrike. The airstrike does way more against the bots. Okay, um, other than the airstrike, the last thing you'll need for this loadout is the shield generator relay. A lot of people underestimate how useful this is, but take a look at the cooldown time, 90 seconds. You can call this down very frequently to get some nice cover, plonk yourself down inside, and shoot out at all the automatons. Using this with the auto cannon is absolutely deadly when you've got a bunch of devastators trying to smoke you. Drop down your shield generator, smoke the devastators, walk away from the fight. You can also use it as a distraction because guess what? When you drop it down behind you while running away, the automatons will fight it instead of fighting you. Gives you a lot of good getaway time, especially because you're running medium armor. So the shield generator is one of the most underrated stratagems and it is so, so good against automatons, especially if you are the auto cannon guy. Being able to set up your own cover and then snipe your enemies is godsend. Do not underestimate this. You can call it in an unlimited amount of times, but it will only last for as long as the shield uh, bubble lasts, and then after that, it's done. All right, but it's on a 90 second cooldown. Spam it whenever you like. Okay? These are the three most necessary stratagems, and you'll notice that in the image, I have one extra stratagem there. Okay, that one is your flex slot. You can bring whatever you like in there. Um. A lot of the time, we like to bring in orbital lasers, but this is only because it helps us take care of certain objectives without us actually having to fight the objective. So do not hesitate to use the orbital laser. The other option that I really like is the, um, and which you'll see me bring along quite often, is the auto cannon sentry. The auto cannon sentry is your friend, and guess what? You can put it down inside your shield generator, and it will shoot out at automatons. Do not hesitate to use this at bot drops, all that kind of stuff, because you will have a fantastic time. Okay, the auto cannon sentry is your friend, and it's on a simple three minute cooldown. Use it freely. You'll get a lot of uses about of this, like whenever you're in the field. Honestly, whenever there's a bot drop, um, I like to just have my auto cannon down. It covers me, kills the bots, and I just chill out and snipe them. So yeah, you can even stand on top of your auto cannon sentry, so you can auto cannon while you auto cannon all right now that's one of my favorite things to do okay that is about it for this loadout like i said the last slot is flexible if you don't like the auto cannon sentry bring along whatever else you want that should cover it for the auto cannon loadout i know this is a long explanation but this is an in-depth explanation that i want you guys to have and understand okay let's move on to the next loadout right now. okay fam so the next loadout that we're going to be talking about is the arc thrower loadout like I said, this pairs with the auto cannon, and they both have different roles. At the end of this, after going through both loadouts, I will explain in depth the um, differences between the two loadouts and why these two loadouts are used in the field together as part of the team. Now, you'll notice from this image already that the uh, that the arc thrower loadout has the eagle air strike, pretty standard, arc thrower, personal shield generator, and the orbital laser. The last slot is a flex slot. Okay. 
but the orbital laser is highly recommended for this one. Now, let's go to the explanation section and we're going to talk about all the stuff in here and why it's used. Okay, here we go. Okay, ladies and gents, let's go through the arc thrower loadout for the automaton meta. Um, for those of you that uh, don't know about it, all right, this is the arc thrower loadout. In general, I'm going to go through all the stuff in here. I'm going to talk about the primary, secondary grenade, the armors used, and then the stratagems. Apologies if this is a bit long. I know the autocannon one was long, but I like to be in depth with my discussion so that you understand the reasons behind every choice. Okay, let's get started. Starting with your primary weapon, the arc throw loadout, um, my personal choice is still the last 16 sickle, but here's the kicker. For the arc throw loadout, you can use whatever you want as your primary weapon. Plasma and Scorcher is still a popular choice. Some people even use the Blitzer, but to be honest, you can do whatever you want. Why? Because the Arc Thrower loadout is much more flexible than the Auto Cannon loadout. You should use whatever primary you feel effective with. As long as you're not in trouble from anything that comes up against you, make sure that your primary weapon can help you counter whatever threats come against you. Me personally, Last 16 Sickle or Plasma One Scorcher would be my choice, but with this build, you can literally use anything you like. So if you want to play the Arc Thrower build, your primary weapon effectively does not matter. Use whatever you find effective against automatons. For your secondary, P19 Redeemer, standard choice. Grenade is impact, standard choice. Same thing we discussed in the auto cannon section. All the same reasons to bring along this equipment. All right. The only difference is that the primary is your choice. It's completely flexible. Now, for the armor set. Okay. Um, my recommended armor is the FS34 Exterminator, but this is a superstore armor set. So if you do not have this, you can use whatever else you want. But the reason I use this is for the 50% resistance to explosive damage. Spicy rockets will always hurt you a lot. This can sometimes save your life against a spicy rocket. Okay. The other choice that people like to use is the Sir, uh, sorry, the Hero of the Federation, which is somewhere here. Savior of the Free or Hero of the Federation. The 50% chance to not die is pretty fantastic, so this is often used if you want to go Judge Dread mode. Um, effectively, it's the same thing. So this one just comes with recoil reduction, but because you're using an arc thrower, you don't really care about recoil. So you can absolutely use Hero of the Federation instead and look pretty badass while doing it. All right, so it's really your choice, or you can use any other medium armor set. Uh, light armor sets are also permitted for this particular loadout, but it's, like I said, it's really your choice. You choose what you feel comfortable with, but me personally, I would recommend either Exterminator or Hero of the Federation. Okay, so that's about it. Now, um, helmet and cape is to your taste. Now let's talk about stratagems. This one has three must-have stratagems, and the other one is a flexible stratagem, just like with the auto cannon. All right. So as you would have seen in the image, uh, the arc thrower, sh personal shield generator, eagle airstrike are pretty much must-haves. Let's discuss them and let's discuss why they are must-have. Obviously, the arc thrower is the main basis of this entire loadout. The arc thrower is fantastic against pretty much all automatons but you are going to struggle a little bit against hulks devastators take three bolts of lightning unless you score a lucky hit on its head so all devastators are three bolts of lightning so please be aware of that no matter what kind of devastator it is three bolts of lightning berserkers five bolts of lightning all right but they are melee so you don't have to worry too much about that most automaton trash mobs will just die in one hit so the arc thrower's main role is to be a front line now this will be discussed more in the um section after this where I talk about the role of each of these loadouts and what they do and how they compare and why they pair up well but the arc thrower guy is going to be the front line all right get used to it you're going to be the first one into combat this prevents you from killing other people with your arc thrower and also it allows you to draw fire which brings us to the next point shield generator is a must-have for this loadout because the arc thrower guy is going to be upfront and personal Having a shield generator is going to save you quite a lot because guess what? Your arc thrower has a limit of 50 meters. The robots can shoot you from beyond that. Please ensure that you are able to get to your effective range. This means, all right, you're going to need a shield generator. So while the auto cannon brings the extra cover that they can plonk down anywhere every 90 seconds, you are going to have a personal shield generator with you. And it is your job to be brave. If you're hanging out in the back, you're already playing this wrong. All right, your range is the short. Your range compared to the auto cannon guy is short, so you know what to do. All right, eagle airstrike is brought along for the same reasons that we bring it along with the auto cannon loadout. You are going to use this against fabricators, tanks. Most of the threats can be dealt with using an eagle airstrike. It is absolutely fantastic. Do not sleep on this. 
it is so so good all right the alternative of course being the 500 kilogram bomb but again unless you're going to destroy a command bunker as your main mission objective the eagle airstrike tends to outperform so we often use the eagle airstrike instead okay now there are other honorable mentions but in general we've tried all of them the eagle airstrike and 500 kilogram bomb does the best and there's no reason for me to tell you about other stuff because that's just going to waste your time okay the last stratagem is flexible for this particular loadout my personal recommendation is the orbital laser why this will take out a heavy automaton outpost or it can be used in a totally messed up situation you can take out detector towers you can take out a lot of stuff with this all right and it is immune to the aa defenses which means you can use it to take out aa defenses mortar emplacements all sorts of things do not hesitate to use the laser and abuse the laser all right sure you've only got three uses but it is best used against a base or if you're really really in trouble you can throw it on the automatons but again we don't really do that we mostly use it on a secondary objective where we really need everything beamed to death all right so this is where it comes in it is extremely good in automaton runs but remember that you've only got three uses and the cooldown each time is 300 seconds that is five minutes so time your use as well know when to use it and abuse it all right but again your last slot is totally flexible whether you have it don't have it the build will still be effective so make sure you use whatever you're comfortable with all right. If you wanna, if you wanna put an eagle, a 500 kilogram bomb, go ahead, go right ahead. You wanna put in a barrage, go right ahead. It's really up to you. You okay, you answer to nobody on your last slot. Do whatever you want with the last slot. Okay. In fact, the barrage has been used by some people and it's pretty effective. Okay, that is it for the Arc Thor loadout. Let's go talk about, okay, how these loadouts compare with one another, what their roles are. Okay. So that's gonna be in the conclusion section. See you there. Okay, family. You sat through my explanations on the metal loadouts. Now, let's do a little bit of explaining, all right? Okay, what you gotta understand is that both of these loadouts have different roles. The autocannon loadout, which again, you will see me do in the streams, is the sniper loadout. You stand way in the back, kill the devastators first, okay? Your job, you see a devastator or you see a hulk, you better kill that before it even gets to your arc thrower guy. Your arc thrower guy's job is to draw fire. Your job is to support him. If you're not supporting your Arc Thor guy and your Arc Thor guy dies, that's on you. All right? But if your Arc Thor guy isn't frontlining for you, that's on him. Okay? This loadout is a support based loadout that also takes on the sniper role. Why not the railgun? Why not the anti material rifle? Because the autocannon outperforms both. Okay? The autocannon outperforms both. Some people say, well, I could have a backpack if I take the other choices yeah and you're gonna die anti-material rifle does not do well against scout riders this does um anti-material rifle requires very good aim and without aim assist it sucks ass okay i've had a lot of trouble with it on mouse and keyboard and i can tell you that unless your aim is perfect or you're cheating um you are probably going to suck okay that's just my honest take on it if any of you like the anti-material rifle, go ahead, but I t I'm going to tell you right now, the autocannon fulfills the sniper role way better because of the extra explosive damage that it has, okay? Make sure you are sniping targets. Please prioritize the devastators. Please prioritize the hulks. You're the guy that takes care of them. If you're not taking care of them, you're wasting your time shooting trash mobs. You're, you're not doing your role. Shoot the trash mobs after you take out the big targets, okay? That's what the autocannon is for. That's what you have a range of, o of practically unlimited... All right, you've got practically unlimited range on the autocannon. That's what it's for, okay? Take those targets out. Now, let's talk about the uh, arc thrower role. The arc thrower loadout's role is basically to frontline. I've already mentioned this in the autocannon section, but you need to be upfront and personal. When you see me play the arc thrower, I'm the first one to charge in because my job is to draw enemy fire. You will also die the most, but if you are not drawing enemy fire, okay, to let your sniper guys do their sniping, then you're also playing wrong because your job is to get in there and say hey look at me hey look at me i'm and then while you while you're zapping away at the targets and dodging shots okay you are taking enemy fire by drawing enemy fire they're not going to be shooting your auto cannon guy who doesn't have a shield and he can just crouch snipe 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 all right so when both of these work together the synergy is amazing 
Okay, Arc Thrower guy gets rid of all the close range threats. Smaller mobs, Auto Cannon guy focuses on those big heavy hitters, absolutely deletes them. And when you have that kind of synergy going, you will see some pretty sick results. But do take note of one thing. The Arc Thrower guy, if they're running Hero of the Federation armor, is not going to have six grenades. So when it comes to a grenade, where, uh, to something where it needs the grenade, let the Auto Cannon guy take care of it most of the time. Your grenades are for emergencies. And when you really need to get out of a messed up situation, let's say a bot drop drops right on you, Arc Thrower guy, throw, throw the grenades on the entire bot drop, it's usually gone. Or a, a tank drops on you and you really have no way out, start throwing, start yeeting those grenades on them. All right, it will take out the tank. So that's the Arc Thor's role. Remember, you have to be brave. You're gonna play this role, then you either are a tank main in Overwatch, or you are, or you are somebody that really, really likes to be stuck in. Okay, and try not to have two of the same role on the team, unless you have a four-man squad. Um, we actually did a little bit of testing, and it's actually better to have one arc thrower, two auto cannons, than to have two arc throwers, one auto cannon. Just so you know, the sniper role is much more crucial against automatons, which have superior range firepower. So if you if you have a full squad of four, two arc throwers, two auto cannons, every mission is GG. We've done it. We've seen it. All right, so. Do try that out and that brings us to the end of this video i hope both of these loadouts will help you guys i hope both of these loadouts will help you guys with the automaton war if you guys need to see examples of gameplay please tune into the streams i'll be fighting against the automatons i'll be leading the charge on the front lines so be there if you want to see how we fight against the automatons be there i promise you i will show you what we do how we overcome the challenges and remember bots are not that scary all you need is the right technique and that's it there will be situations where I play with randos. There will be situations like in case none of my squad members are on. If my squad members are on, we'll game. But trust me, I will be more than happy to show you guys the techniques for dealing with automatons. So do tune into the streams if you want to see the gameplay. Because like I said, you're not going to learn anything from a 10-minute video or whatever. Like that's really not going to help you because there's a whole variety of situations you need to take into account. Okay? So you want to see that, come to the streams. The links are in the description of the video to the streams that are already done. You can always subscribe and come to future streams as well if you want to learn. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys want to support us, well, there's a variety of ways you could do that. But here are the top supporters for March. We're going to give a thank you and a shout out before we go. All right. Let's start. Let's start with March's top supporters. Okay. Here we go. For March's top supporters, we have our top tipper is Nisk, top tipper is BVS Fang as well, uh, top super chatter Teddy Lasso, uh, top super chatter list includes Wishless Destroyer, Arcane Silver, John McKinley, RNSPO, Lord J, Chanel Lane, top channel membership gifter is Lord J, and top channel membership gifters are Vinny and Nightshade. Thank you guys so much. All right, um, let's also talk about channel members. Here we go. Our top channel members are Teddy Lasso and Nisk at the only fan level, Arcane Silver 300 and Death Donnie 982 at Plus Ultra. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you to our Prestige and Honor robots as well. I hope you guys will enjoy everything that we've done so far. All right. Thank you for keeping us running. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Y'all have a good one and see you on the automaton front. Don't be fighting terminates now. All right. Major orders out there, let's go kill some bots.